Welcome to Old School Shooter and this review of the Fujifilm X70 compact camera as a video shooter. When Fujifilm announced the X70 back in January, it was almost completely overshadowed by the imminent release of the long awaited and much anticipated Fujifilm X Pro 2. Plenty of photographers had jumped onto the X series bandwagon with the release of the X Pro 1, but the 2 promised to iron out all the quirks that were present in the one and send photographers to Nirvana. And because it took Fujifilm so long to actually release the X-Pro2, the rumour mill was in full swing with those who thought they were in the know teasing us with all kinds of specifications they thought the camera was likely to have. By the time it was actually released, the clamour for the X-Pro2 meant that the X70 just kind of slipped in almost unnoticed under the radar. But I'd had my eye on it from the start. I finally picked one up earlier this summer when the price in the UK fell to below £500. I certainly had no qualms about the image quality of the Fujifilm X70. It had already proved itself to be a very very capable still shooter. It is after all the baby brother of the excellent X100T which I'm also lucky enough to own. And of course, it had all the usual Fuji goodness baked right into its small but perfectly formed body. The diminutive size of the X70 makes it a stealthy little shooter when you need it to be, and the 28mm equivalent wide angle lens will get you out of a tight spot when you find yourself in a tight spot. You can even fit the X70 into the front pocket of your Levi's. But if you wear your jeans any tighter than where I wear my baggy old 501s, you may find that you look like you're very, very pleased to see absolutely everyone as you walk down the street. And on top of all that, the X70 also shoots video. Not that I was interested in shooting video on it when I first bought it. But now that I'm planning to add video to services I offer to clients, I'm very, very interested in its video shooting capabilities. The X70 is never going to be anyone's first choice of video camera. It's a machine for taking still pictures and it does that very well indeed. Even the briefest glance at the video section of reviews of the X70 reveal it to be the bananas and custard of its skill set. A mere afterthought. That said, the very well respected DP review did point out that the X70's excellent intervalometer with its option to shoot RAW, specify a time delay before filming starts, and the fact that the camera can be powered by an external power source via USB while shooting, makes it a real time-lapse powerhouse. So that's encouraging. What I need to know is whether the X70 can act as a backup camera, a second camera on shoots, something that'll allow me to have two cameras running at once and get different angles of the same shot concurrently. Also, I'm looking at shooting it for B-roll and for cutaway shots and also for some of the behind the scenes videos that I'm planning to bring you here on the channel. So with all this in mind, I set off on what started out as a beautiful, clear, bright December day to take a look at the video shooting capabilities of the Fujifilm X70. Behind me is Middlesbrough's world famous transporter bridge, one of perhaps two still working all over the world. At more than 100 years old it was a feat of engineering in its time and it's still a feat of engineering now. Several trips across the River Tees each day as you can see, carrying mostly cars these days but it also still carries foot passengers and in fact the bridge has recently been refurbished to give passengers, foot passengers, a much better experience. There's a lift now up towards the top of the bridge and the views up and down the River Tees from there are absolutely stunning, particularly on a fine December day like this. So this seemed a reasonable place, or at least as good a place as any, to test out the video capabilities of the Fujifilm X70 compact camera. For now I'm just going to shut up and let you just have a nice view of the, the car deck coming onto the, onto the river bank. So from the transporter bridge, it's just a short run down the river 
to Middlesbrough Riverside Stadium, which is the home of the mighty borough. Sometimes mighty, sometimes not so mighty. But we'll head down there, see what we can get with this camera. The area around Middlesbrough's Riverside Football Club is still undeveloped. But what about the video capabilities of the baby Fuji? Image-wise, I think the X70 did a decent job with the sensor handling the conditions as well for video as it does for stills. But it did struggle with things like railings where some very unsightly chromatic aberration crept in and proved very distracting. Auto focusing during shooting proved to be a bad idea and all too often the lens slipped in and out of focus to the point where if I'm going to shoot video with the X70 I'm going to switch to manual focus to effectively lock it down. However, manually focusing on the fly with such a small focusing ring probably isn't the best idea either. So I'll be looking to shoot at an aperture of around f8 to get decent depth of field. It's worth noting though that the autofocus fared much better in the bright winter sunlight back at the transporter bridge than it did in the murky conditions that had developed at the stadium in the five minutes or so it took me to drive there and set up. As for audio, when I filmed the trailer for this review, I was pleased with how well the X70's built-in stereo microphone did indoors. But a quick chat with this guy, who complained for at least half an hour about footballers' wages and the, the clueless nature of the average Premier League manager, it confirmed exactly what I'd suspected about the mic when out and about. It's garbage. 25 year. Uh, I'm trying to cut for 1990 to the to be fair, you wouldn't expect fantastic sound quality from any microphone with a wind noise that was around that day. But uh, an inst uh, you know, an external mic really would be a must if you're planning to record sound anywhere other than inside the you know the quietest indoor room. Be advised though that the X70's microphone port is two and a half mil as opposed to the standard three and a half mil. You can get adapters to solve the problem and they're very cheap but of course it's yet another piece of kit to make sure that you've got in your bag and I guess there's always a chance that the extra connection may just degrade the sound a little bit but overall I think if you really do need to record sound with the X70 and you get yourself a decent microphone and get it plugged in there, I think it's going to do quite well for you. So what's the verdict? Well, I've chewed it over and for what I want to use the X70 for, as a second camera for B-roll and cutaways and for a different angle on the same shot, I think it's viable, albeit with a couple of workarounds. Like all video cameras, I'd be looking to get it onto a tripod of some sort for stability and I'd avoid autofocus like the plague. And again, like all video cameras, I'd be looking to use an external mic unless I was interviewing someone at close quarters in a very quiet room. Overall, I still don't think anyone is going to rush out and buy the X70 to use as a video camera, but if you've got one and you haven't yet tried to shoot video with it, it may be time to reach for that fiddly red button to the right of the shutter release.